welcome to Church the Crossing Online. We are so glad that you have made the decision to join with us today to worship. If you're new to Church the Crossing, we would love to give you a free coffee from the Haverstick. The Haverstick is located right here on the Church the Crossing campus, and you can redeem that coffee anytime throughout the week or even on a Sunday morning. We would love to meet with you either at the Haverstick or on campus, so make sure you get that free coffee. And in order to do that, all you have to do is text the word hello to the number 317-961-3332. I hope you do that. Also, if there is any way that we could be praying with you or for you, we would love to know that. Open up your app and submit your prayer request through there. Let us join with you and approach the throne of God. Now, we are going to transition into worship, so let's get ready. Welcome, church. It's so good to be able to be together again today, and we pray that you will join us and you will sing with us and you will worship. Let's bow our heads quickly and we'll pray today. Father, we love you and we are grateful. Father, we stand here with grateful hearts, and we pray that everything that is done, every note that is sung, will bring honor and glory to your name. And we pray, Lord, that you will find blessing in our worship together. Amen. Let's sing together. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty. God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Let's sing together. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all ye sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for.
sinners, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Church family, I would love to read a passage of scripture uh, with you and for you. Um, This comes from Psalms 56, verses 8 through 9. You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. Friends, Um, Right now, there's just a lot of unknowns in our world, but the one thing that we do know is that God is there for us. He is with us. He has not left us. God loves you. And right now, I want to pray for whoever may be watching, whenever they may be watching, because God hears you. It doesn't matter if you are in this moment right now or if you're listening to this weeks from now. God knows your name, and he is for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we are so grateful for the way that you love us. You know us. You knit us together in our mother's womb, God. You know the number of hairs on our head. You formed us. You created us. You are the same God who created the stars and the sun and the moon, and yet you created us. God, thank you. God, I want to lift up the person who is feeling alone and discouraged. God, will you encourage them right now? Show up in a big and mighty way. Help them to hear your voice speaking that you love them, that you care for your child. God, for the person who is feeling afraid, you have told us we shall not fear. You, your presence has gone before us, God. You are the almighty God who has already overcome and has claimed victory in our life. Whether that is anxiety or fear or depression, if if there's a financial problem, God, you already know and you have claimed victory over that. God, we want to offer everything we have to you. We want to lift our hands in praise of you. For you are doing good and wondrous things in our lives. God, we love you. And for each and every person that hears this prayer, God, I pray that you will continue to go before them, that you will be behind them, that you will surround them. God, we know without a doubt that you are for us. God, let that message just ring through our head and in our hearts for the rest of this week. And we offer all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, I want to encourage you today that whatever giant you're facing or whatever battle you're going through, God wants to be there right with you. He wants to fight that battle for you. And as this next song says, He takes what the enemy means for evil and he turns it to good. And he wants to do that with you today. So as we sing this next song together, let's declare victory, God's victory over all of our battles. Will you sing with us today?
our church. He takes what the enemy means for evil and he turns it for good. Let's sing this together. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Welcome to Church of the Crossing Online. My name is Andrew, I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm so glad that you're watching today. We are in a message series called When Pigs Fly, and today we're gonna be looking at one of the miracles of Jesus. Primarily, we're gonna look at the miracle of healing. And so as we begin, I wanna start with a question. What is one of the worst pains that you've ever felt? Take a moment and think about some of the, 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 the moment that you had a terrible pain, maybe an injury or a, a concussion, or maybe you had stitches for something, but think about a moment where you experienced uh, pain. Not too long ago, one day, I was gonna go for a run in my neighborhood. It was early in the morning and I had a short window of time before I needed to go to work and I was gonna fit in a run. Well, early in the morning that particular day, the outdoor temperature was really chilly. I think it barely reached 30 degrees that morning, but I thought that was warm enough to run outdoors. 
But because I had such a small amount of time, I decided to skip stretching and warming up my muscles, and I started cold. Now, if you've ever run in cold weather, cold temperature, you know that it is a bad idea to skip stretching and warming up. But that's what I did. Uh, I turned out in my driveway and I started running down my sidewalk. And I think that first half mile went pretty well. Maybe that first three quarters of a mile I was doing fine. But then my legs started to cramp up. The cold temperature, not stretching, my legs started to lock up. My joints stopped moving and I had to slow down. And I had to get to a point where I needed to stop and actually try to stretch and work out those leg cramps. And then I tried running again, but it was still terribly painful. And I'm not exaggerating this. Uh, it was so bad that I couldn't even jog. I had to slow down to a walk. And then that walk was still so painful, I began limping down the sidewalk. I probably looked a little bit foolish having run and then now I'm limping. And I was so far away from home, I thought there's no way I'm gonna be able to limp all the way back to my house. So in my humiliation, I used my cell phone and I called Lauren, my wife who was still at home. And Lauren got in the car and she found me limping down the sidewalk and, and picked me up. And embarrassingly, I got into the passenger seat and we went home. Well, the rest of that day, uh, my muscles were still pretty sore. And it took a couple more days of stretching and rest before I was ready to run again. Now, many of you know my wife Lauren is a marathon runner. She runs long distances. She's run in many races. She's an expert at long distance running. And I'm grateful that she picked me up that day, but she did not give me any sympathy when she found out that I neglected to stretch and warm up properly. Now, I'm sure that you've experienced pain in your life too, probably something more painful than the experience that I described. What's some of the worst pain that you have felt? Was it um, an illness, a diagnosis? Are you being treated for chronic pain or a chronic disease? Maybe the pain you felt isn't even physical. Is it emotional pain or spiritual pain? Is it uh, a broken heart, broken dreams? Is it relational pain with somebody else? And whether you're a follower of Jesus or whether you have some questions and doubts about faith, I think most of us can agree that when we look around our world, we see a lot of hurt and pain. We see a broken world that's filled with pain. For example, I want to share some information with you. I found a couple of things that you might be interested to know. I learned recently that in the United States, one in four children grows up in a single parent home. I mean, think about the language we use. We, we say that's a broken family, that's a broken home. Here in Indianapolis, 18% of the people live in poverty, which is actually 8% higher than the national average. You know, some people might say that the system is broken. And just a couple of weeks ago, just recently, I read a study that had some alarming information. And this study reported 63% of 18 to 24 year olds are reporting symptoms of anxiety and depression. 63% of young adults are dealing with emotional and mental challenges. That study also says that 25% of those people admit to uh, abusing substances or using substances to self-medicate and cope with those challenges. And then one more piece of information that I found disturbing is that in the last three years, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. And it's actually three times higher among men than it is among women. This information is not just numbers. These are lives, lives of people who are loved by God and who are critically broken. And as we look around our world, our world, this world is broken and it needs healing. And that's why Jesus came. 2000 years ago, Jesus came to this world on a mission to heal. The mission of Jesus is to heal a broken world. Jesus came to bring healing, to fix our brokenness. He came to right every wrong. He came to heal every hurt. The greatest pain in our lives is caused by the pain of sin. 
Sin is that junk that separates us from God. And sin has created pain in our lives. Or for example, our personal sin has canceled our relationship with God. We can't go to heaven because of our personal sin. And the sins of other people have scarred our hearts. We've been hurt by others. We've been scarred by others. And sin in this world has introduced brokenness and pain into our lives. Because of sin, we have physical pain, like disease and violence and death and sickness. There's emotional pain, like anxiety and fear and depression. And of course, there's relational pain. There's, there's broken marriages, there's abuse, there's bitterness. And, and all of this pain that's caused by sin has affected us personally. We are all broken. I'm broken. You may have heard me share before in the past that I struggled against an addiction to pornography for years. That, 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 that sin scarred me. I've got brokenness from my family of origin, trauma from relationships in the past. I'm broken. And just like that story I shared about my run as I was limping down the sidewalk, sin in this world has given us a limp. Many of us walk through life with a limp. We try to hide it. We try to ignore it. But we're all broken. We need healing. Only Jesus can heal our deepest pain. Only Jesus can bring the healing that we need. When Jesus died on the cross, he defeated every sin. And when he rose from the dead, he conquered all evil so that we can be healed. And I wanna ask you today, do you need healing? Today, do you need healing uh, in your heart? Do you need a spiritual healing from guilt and regret? Do you need healing in your body? Are you fighting a sickness? Are you fighting pain? Do you need healing in your body? Do you need healing from something in the past? Only Jesus can bring healing. Put your faith and trust in Jesus and the healing process will begin. Not only does Jesus heal us, but when you follow Jesus, when you walk with Jesus, he invites you to join his mission. He invites you on his mission to heal a broken world. And this is the big idea. This is the main point that I wanna share with you today. Live on mission. This is the big idea. Live on mission. If you're a follower of Jesus, God has called you to his mission. And even if you're not following Jesus because you have doubts or questions, I promise you the greatest decision you can make is to follow him and and follow the mission of healing a broken world. That's where you find fulfillment and satisfaction. And so today we're gonna look at a story from Jesus's life in Luke chapter nine in the Bible. And in this story, Jesus is with his 12 disciples, 12 friends who followed Jesus closely. And these 12 disciples saw Jesus heal the sick. They saw him raise the dead and cast out demons. And in this story, Jesus sends those 12 to live on mission. Let's read this together. Luke 9, verse 1. It says, He called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. So up until this point, the 12 disciples watched Jesus healing the sick, doing ministry. But now Jesus says, hey, don't watch me, go do it. You live on mission. Look at what it says in verse 12. He sent them out. He sent them out. God is sending you out on a mission to heal a broken world. God is sending you to bring hope and healing to a broken world. Your purpose in life is far bigger than just go to school, start a career. Your purpose in life is bigger than uh, earn, earn, earn money, pay down debt, save for retirement. You have a greater calling and that calling is to live on mission. God is going to lead you and use you to bring healing to a broken world. So the question is, how do we do it? How do we live on mission? How do we join God's mission to heal a broken world? Well, the answer is in our text. We we follow the strategy of God. God's strategy for this mission is good news and good works. That's our strategy, good news and good works. Look closely at our text. Look at verse two. Jesus sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God. That's good news and to heal good works. And then verse six, 
they departed and went through all the villages preaching the gospel, that's good news, and healing, that's good works. When you live on mission, it means we share good news and good works. The good news is that every sinner can be saved because of Jesus, that we can all be forgiven and have eternal life because Jesus died and rose from the dead. That's the good news. And the mission of healing also is demonstrated by the good works of Jesus, by the good works of God in our lives. Now, there are many different good works. There's, there's a lot of good works, things like uh, visiting those who are shut in, taking care of the poor, feeding the hungry. Those are good works. Our church just last month uh, distributed 1,300 boxes of food and produce. That's a good work. That's a great work. Today, I want to concentrate on the good work of praying for healing. I'm not ignoring all of the other good work and good ministry, but in our text, we see primarily healing is talked about here in our text. And when I look at the life of Jesus, I see Jesus doing both good news and good works. Jesus was teaching and he was also healing. He never healed without sharing good news and he never shared good news without healing. Look at Mark chapter or Matthew chapter four with me. It says in verse 23, Jesus went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, that's good news, proclaiming the gospel and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So when we look at the life of Jesus, Jesus was preaching and healing, teaching and healing, proclaiming and healing. He never distinguished between his preaching ministry and his healing ministry. It was good news and good works. That's why I believe so strongly that you can pray for healing. When you pray for healing, you're combining good news and good works. The words that you're praying are sharing the love of God. And the, the prayer for healing is demonstrating the power, the good works of God. Because I believe that healing prayer releases more of the Father's love. When we pray for a pain or a hurt to be healed, we are releasing more of God's love. When you pray for someone who is sick with an illness, you're releasing God's love. When you pray with somebody who has back pain or a migraine, you're releasing more of God's love. I recently read uh, theologian D.S. Warner, who was a theologian in the 19th century and one of the founders of the Church of God movement in Anderson, Indiana. And here's what D.S. Warner has to say about good news and good works. He writes, healing miracles and salvation go hand in hand as cause and effect. The manifestation of miracle power is an essential condition to fully preaching the gospel. Good news and good works. When you live on mission, if you want to bring healing to a broken world, our strategy is good news and good works. Now, this is something I did not understand for a long time. And let me share a story to describe that. When I was a few years ago, I met a young man who was far from God. Um, he was making a lot of poor choices, some unwise decisions, things that were, were hurting him and hurting his family. And so I met with this young man and, and I shared the good news with him. Um, I told him about God's love. I told him about God's forgiveness. I described his need for a savior. I, I told him the story of Jesus. And you could just tell this young man listened to me patiently, but you could tell by his body language, he wasn't buying what I was selling. He listened politely, but it had no effect on him. See, at that time, I thought that my words could change someone's mind. I thought that my speech could change someone's heart. See, my presentation lacked the power that come with the love of God. This young man didn't need another speech. He didn't need another lecture. This young man needed the love of God in action in his life. He needed a friend to demonstrate the power and the love of God in his life. When you live on mission, you show good news and good works. See, a, a Facebook post is not as powerful as praying with somebody who's hurting or passing out a gospel tract 
may not be as powerful as having a conversation with somebody, a conversation in love and showing them the love of God personally. Donating money is a good work and, and we need to be generous people. That, that is good and right. But we also need to share the gospel. We need to share good news. Even as we are generous, we, we share the message of Jesus. That has more power. And volunteering is a good work. It's a great thing. We need more people to volunteer. But if all we do is, is work and volunteer without sharing the good news of Jesus, without sharing the love of God, it's not as powerful as when we have good news and good works. If we wanna see God heal a broken world, that's our strategy. I saw this demonstrated in a really powerful way one time. I met a man named Bob who asked me for healing prayer. Bob had terrible back pain. It was excruciating back pain, very sharp, stabbing back pain. And we prayed together. And after we prayed once, nothing changed. And we prayed again and nothing changed. He still had that pain. And I felt prompted to ask Bob about his relationship with God. And when I asked him, Bob just kind of hung his head and he shared shamefully. He said that he wasn't living a good life. He said he wasn't on the right path. He had some regret and uh, failures. He was just living with a lot of shame. And so I shared the good news with Bob and I said, Bob, God doesn't want you to live with shame. Jesus died for your shame so you can be forgiven, so you can have a new life. Do you want that new life? And Bob said yes. And Bob prayed to put his faith and trust in Jesus and to receive the forgiveness of God. And after Bob prayed, I asked him how his back felt. And Bob's eyes got real big and he smiled and he said it felt a lot better. He, he said it still was uncomfortable, but that sharp stabbing pain, that, that nerve pain was completely gone because God wanted to do a miracle in Bob's body and in Bob's heart. The greatest miracle that God can do is to transform a life, to transform someone's heart. And sometimes healing prayer, physical healing, opens the door for somebody to have a heart healing, a spiritual healing. And so when you pray for healing, when you live on mission, you're going to see God's miracles happen. You're going to see people heal. You're going to see a broken world begin to heal when you're living on mission. I recognize that many of us have been praying and waiting for healing. We've been hoping, we've been trusting, but we just haven't seen the progress that we want. And I want to say to you that God loves you. I don't know why you haven't seen the healing that you've been seeking, but I do know that God is not punishing you, that God is not trying to teach you a lesson. God sees you and he loves you. There was a time where Jesus met a woman who had suffered for 12 years with a bleeding disorder. She had tried many different things. She had tried healing. I'm sure she had tried praying, but for 12 years, she did not have healing until she met Jesus. Do you think there's something magical about waiting for 12 years? I don't think so. It was God's timing, God's way, God's plan. God loves you and he sees you and he's with you. Now you may be hearing me and, and, and you think to yourself, okay, I believe God can heal and I'm even willing to try and pray for healing. But what do I do? What do I need? How do I do it? Jesus will give you everything that you need. What we need is right here in our text. Take a look with me at Luke chapter nine, verse one. Jesus called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. And he said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, bread, no money, and do not have two tunics. So imagine these 12 disciples. Jesus says, hey guys, you're gonna go and do the same ministry I do. And those 12 guys probably thought, okay, we're excited. We're gonna go cast out demons. We're gonna raise the dead. We're gonna heal the sick. Jesus, just give us what we need. But Jesus doesn't give them anything. He says, you don't need any money. You don't need extra clothes. You'll be fine. How is that encouraging? Look closely at verse one. It says, he called the 12 together and gave them power and authority 
over all demons and to cure diseases. When you live on mission, Jesus gives you his power and his authority to work miracles, to pray for healing, to, to deliver, to see lives transformed, his power and his authority. Now today, we're not gonna talk much about authority over demons because next week, we're gonna talk a lot about spiritual warfare. But today we're talking about praying for healing. In, in leadership culture, there are four types of critical systems. And maybe if you're in business or another leadership role, you've heard about these critical systems. There's business critical, safety critical, security critical, and mission critical. And mission critical are the tools to help you fulfill your mission. So if you're a parent and your mission is to get the kids to school on time, your car, your vehicle is mission critical. Or if your mission is to maximize profits in sales in your business, then your product is mission critical to your fulfilling your mission. The power and authority of Jesus are mission critical to healing a broken world. When we live on mission, we need his power and his authority. It's mission critical. But did you notice in verse three, that Jesus throws out the other critical systems. He says, take nothing for your journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money. Don't have a change of clothes. So if we think about it, a walking staff is like security critical. You know, at this time in history, a, a walking staff uh, helped you navigate rocky terrain. It was uh, a defense against wild animals or bandits that would attack on these long journeys. But Jesus says, you don't need security critical. And also the, the bread and the change of clothes, that's safety critical. Obviously, extra food and extra clothes for a long journey provide safety. And then money is business critical. I don't know about you, but before I travel, I make a budget. <laughs> If Lauren and I are going on vacation, I save the money that we need. I budget our expenses, our, um, our, our, our budget for food, lodging, travel. I keep our receipts. But here Jesus says, don't worry about money. Don't take any money with you. Jesus throws out all those critical systems because only the power and authority of Jesus is mission critical. And I think most of us could make a list of the things that we think are critical to live on mission. We can say things like, I need more training. I need to know the Bible more. Uh, if I want to live on mission, I need a different job. I need to make more money. Or we could say things like, I just need to retire first and then I can live on mission. Or I need the kids to grow up and then I can do more. I can live on mission. Some of those things are helpful and good, but they're not critical. Mission critical is Jesus's power and his authority. It's not our own power. It's not our own authority. It's his. We receive it. And so that, that's the first step that I encourage you to take. The first step is to receive his power and his authority. Receive his power and authority. A few years ago, a friend of mine invited me to a special ceremony. My friend was receiving his commission as an officer in the United States Marine Corps. And I was honored to be one of his guests at this ceremony. And as I sat in the crowd, I saw my friend and all of the other new officers and they walked in and, and they stood in, in a line and they were all uh, uh, wearing their sharpest uniforms. Everything was pressed, everything was polished and, and they, they looked wonderful. And then a senior officer, a high ranking officer delivered a speech charging these new officers to fulfill their duty with honor and courage and integrity. And it was very inspiring. And this speech was very patriotic. And I felt inspired. I felt my own emotions stirred by the, the patriotic uh, speech that he gave. I was so moved that I wonder if a Marine recruiter had found me that day, I might've signed up. But then on second thought, that involves boot camp, so maybe not. But the point is, my friend is an officer in the Marine Corps. And he has power and authority because of his position. He's received power and authority, power from his training, authority from the United States government. Whenever he's in that uniform, he's clothed in the power and authority given to him. When he's deployed on a mission, he has the power and authority of the Marine Corps. God has deployed you into this world 
to live on mission. He's deployed you to bring healing to a broken world and you are covered in the power and the authority of Jesus. Receive his power. We, we don't earn it, we don't deserve it. We just receive it as a gift. Jesus says in Acts chapter one, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. The Spirit of God gives you the power of Jesus. I know so many people in our church who are living on mission, who are walking in the power and the authority of God, who are seeing people healed. For example, a few weeks ago, a man attended one of our weekend services. And at the end of the service, this man approached a volunteer prayer partner and he asked for prayer because the man had um, symptoms of whiplash. His neck and his shoulders were, were a lot of pain. And so the prayer partner prayed for this man and immediately the pain went away. The symptoms were gone. He was healed by God. And right after that, just a moment after that, a, a woman came to the prayer partner and she also said she had symptoms and pain from whiplash. Now these two people, the first man that was healed and this woman don't have a connection or a relationship. I mean, unless they had a fender bender with each other and, and didn't remember that it was each other. But this woman also had uh, symptoms and the prayer partner prayed for her and all of her pain was healed. I mean, I guess God was just healing whiplash that day. On another occasion, a few months ago, we had a equipping session where many people in our church learned how to pray for healing. Maybe you were there. We had a lot of people there and uh, four volunteers volunteered to pray for healing for people in pain. And when those four volunteers prayed, that day we saw um, joint and arthritis healed. We saw muscle pain healed. We even saw somebody who had difficulty seeing with one of their eyes. We saw that eyesight restored. That eye was healed. And let me remind you, the people who were doing the praying were not staff or pastors, not seminary graduates. They were regular people like us operating in the power and authority of Jesus. You can pray for healing because God has given you his power and authority. And so I wanna invite you to consider the next equipping session. It's coming up next month where you can learn more, where you can grow in operating in power and authority. How to pray for healing, how to see miracles happen, how to uh, be effective in praying for the sick and praying for the hurting. You can go to our website or our app and, and sign up for this equipping. Well, the next step, that we need to take if we want to live on mission is to meet them where they are. Meet them where they are. When we're walking in the power and authority of God, when we're praying for healing, we need to meet people where they are. And I want you to look at the very last thing that our text says. Did you notice the last word in our text? Here's what it says in verse six. They departed and went through the villages preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. The mission of God is everywhere. The mission of God is not just here in the church building. Yes, God can do great things inside our church on our campus, but the mission of God, the hurting world is beyond these walls. Meet them where they are. You have a mission in the classroom, in the boardroom, in the lunchroom. You've got a mission in your home and in your neighborhood. Wherever you go, you are on mission. Meet them where they are. There are people around you who are hurting, people who are struggling with addiction and need healing. Meet them where they are. People who are carrying grief and, and uh, loss, meet them where they are. This week, you may find yourself hearing a coworker describe pain, physical pain in their body or a struggle that they're having. Offer to pray with them. Meet them where they are. Now, they may say no, but that's okay. Whenever I offer to pray for folks, nine out of 10 times, they say yes. In your small group this week, practice praying for healing. You may have a small group member who is uh, uh, sick or is in pain. Practice praying for healing. Meet them where they are. God has a mission for you to live on mission wherever you are. Meet them where they are. You may be watching this and right now you need God to meet you right where you are. You might be sick. You might be in pain. You might need a healing in your body. You may be far away from God and desperate for his love today right now. In a moment, we're gonna have a time of prayer where you can receive the healing that God wants to do. And before we have that prayer time, I wanna share one more story. It's the story about Bill. 
someone who's been a part of our church for many, many years. And recently I sat down with Bill and we recorded his story on video and I wanna share it with you right now. My name is Bill Green. And I'm his wife, Carol Green. And we attend Church at the Crossing. Well, I got up one morning about a month ago and immediately I could tell that I was not gonna be able to stand up. Uh, I was very dizzy and uh, along with the dizziness uh, came nausea. I actually had to support myself mm. on the walls or Carol's hands. I, I, can't, I can't walk at all. I couldn't walk at all. I just remember his term for the feeling he was having was that the world was spinning and it wouldn't stop spinning. And I told him, I said, well, make sure you're sitting down or lying down when your world spins because you're a big guy and I can't pick you up. <laughs> but uh, I think he was very, very frightened with good reason. I actually had this for about 10 days. We decided uh, to call the doctor and uh, went to an ear specialist. And the ear specialist uh, could not find anything uh, as far as uh, the ears were clean. They suggested that I would have maybe uh, some therapy, some physical therapy. Uh, and if the balancing continued, uh, use a cane uh, when I walked. We went to Thursday night church service. And after the service, uh, they asked, they, they asked if anyone wanted to come down and pray with a, a prayer partner uh, to come on down. And so we went down, you know, because I really felt like I needed the prayer. I, I needed to be healed. I was tired of this. I told the prayer partner uh, what was going on. The prayer partner asked if they could uh, place a hand on my shoulder and we all held hands and prayer partner started praying and praying for healing complete healing of everything that I talked about and uh, at the end of the prayer I felt God's presence uh, I felt like the healing of the, I had no more balance problems at that time. It was completely gone. And during that next two or three days, uh, I had no dizziness. It was gone. Dizziness was gone. And all the side effects were gone. We decided uh, to call the doctor. So we went in and uh, they said that the audiologist said, it would be a couple hours, hour and a half to two hours, of nothing but test. They ran every test possible. They raised me up and down. They turned me sideways. They took my head and put their hands on either side of my head and shook it, shook, just shook my head that if, you know, it would have given about anybody a, a headache. And uh, they said, uh, are you ready to go? They said, we cannot find a thing wrong with you. In a, a day or two, they sent uh, a couple page letter with every test that they gave me, signed by the doctors. And they said, uh, I was clear. They said, we could not find any problems with all the tests that we ran. So I praise God. I had complete healing. God can heal. And it's not just physical healing, it's any healing that you need. You know, whether it just be emotional or, or personal, you know, God's there. And, uh, and he wants to, he wants you to pray to him and he wants you to believe. 
like Bill said, God can heal and he wants to hear your prayer. Today, I don't know where you are or what you need, but God does and he sees you and he's with you. I wanna invite you into a time of prayer right now. You're welcome to close your eyes, to bow your head where you are. And if you're watching this and today you need a spiritual healing, I want you to pray to put your faith in Jesus. If you're far from God and you need a spiritual healing, you need his forgiveness, repeat this prayer. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner and I believe Jesus died and rose from the dead. And today I choose Jesus to be Lord of my life. And you may be watching and you need healing. You need physical healing. You need a healing in your heart. You need healing from a pain or a disease. God wants to heal you and he is able to heal you. If you're with a family member right now, I encourage you to ask them to put a hand on your shoulder or on the, the part of your body that is in pain or needs healing. If you're watching by yourself, that's okay. Put your, put your hand on your shoulder, on your heart, on, on, a, on a place where you need healing right now. And we're gonna invite God's presence into this moment. God, will you come and bring healing? Holy Spirit, come into the, into the room with my friends who are watching and bring your healing. We reject disease. We rebuke evil and illness in the name of Jesus. We rebuke pain. We rebuke arthritis and joint pain in the name of Jesus. And we invite total healing. God, may my friends watching right now feel your presence and feel the healing in their body, healing in their mind. God, those who are struggling with an emotional or a traumatic pain, God, will you bring healing right now? Will you remove the, the shame and the regret that some are carrying right now and bring healing? We invite all of this in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And God, for my friends who are watching and maybe they don't need a personal healing, but they know somebody who needs healing, someone who is uh, close to them, a family member, a friend, God, give them the courage, give them the opportunity to pray with that person. God, give them the confidence to trust you and to not give up. God, those who have been praying for someone to be healed for many years, for they've been tearing in prayer. God, give them the courage right now. I think God just wants to say to you, he sees you. You've been praying for a long time. Don't give up. Don't give up. God is with you. He hears your prayers and he's walking beside you. Father, we love you and we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Friends, I hope that today's message was so encouraging for you. And even though we are in the second week of this sermon series, it is not too late to join a small group. You can go to our app and sign up for one. I hope you do that. There's also books still available, so make sure you pick a book up as well. Um, the last thing, oh, if you are on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on any future uploads. Have a great and blessed week. Bye.